It's early in a long season for bull riding's best, but the chase has already taken its toll. Oh! What a shot right there. And last season's heavy hitters are back for another crack at the PBR World title. Cole Baba with the can-do attitude. Cooper Davis reeled in the big one yet again. But in a young season, new faces are stepping up. The guy can really ride. Denner Barbosa is now the world number one. The race for the PBR World Champion Bucking Bull is beginning. Pearl Harbor, just too much. Bruiser's campaign begins. And the reigning world champion, Jess Lockwood, is looking for his first win this year and back-to-back -back gold buckles. That's what gets your season back on track. Today, it's the PBR 15-15 bucking battle from Sacramento, where double points are on the line for the top 15 Cowboys versus the top 15 Bulls on CBS. The capital of California is accustomed to daily doses of drama, but we're about to unleash the beast, so be warned. Defending PBR world champ Jess Lockwood has ventured west in search of points. They're to be had, but protected by a bovine minefield. Denner Barbosa has dialed up the determination, and he's as dialed in as they come. 12 for 13 to start the year. No wonder he's number one. In the PBR's 25th anniversary season, they have unleashed the beast, and today marks the sixth anniversary of where the 1515 Buffalo Bengals all began here in Sacktown. Hello, everybody, alongside two time PBR world champion Justin McBride. I am Craig Hummer. We've heard it a couple times already, Mac. Denner Barbosa, number one in the world for the first time ever in his career, and it looks like he might be there a while. Yeah, and this 23 year old guy from Brazil is quickly becoming a household name, Craig. Check it out. Barbosa is riding a ridiculous 92% of his bulls right now, and that's why he's our sonic rider to watch. Check him out, man. It does not matter what a bull does. He rides either direction really well, and his riding style is conducive to the tougher bulls, which he's going to face today in the 15-15 bucking battle. The bull he's got, Heartbreak Kid, he is going to have to have all his stuff working for him because nobody's had an answer for this bull. Denner may be number one in the world, but last week the confetti was flying for the Oklahoma favorite, Ryan Dirt Eater. He's standing by with Kate Harrison. And with that start, Craig, the fastest start that Ryan's had in his career. What do you attribute the early success to? Yeah, it's a great start. Just a lot of hard work and dedication. And you've got frequent flyer, tough one, unridden. So what's it going to take to be the first to make it to eight on this one? He's a tough bull. They warmed him up. Uh, I got my frequent flyer miles built up. I'm ready to go. Doesn't get much better than that. Shorty, I know you got a lot of frequent flyer miles too, don't you? Absolutely, Kate. I got to tell you, though, I love seeing kind of a resurgence from Ryan Dirt Eater. Another guy we've been seeing a little resurgence from here lately is Derek Kobaba. But I got to tell you guys, he's got his hands full today. Smooth operator, a great bull, been around for a long time. Former runner-up for Bull of the Year, usually out of left-hand delivery, is absolutely treacherous to ride out of left. The last three trips, he's been out of right a little bit better, but still extremely ranked, guys. He's going to have to have his hand up. Uh, have to duck that row today. Well, Mac, off of what Shorty just said, as well as the statistics, they do not bode well for Derek Kolbaba. Look at that. He had a ride. Let's take you all the way back to 2016, where Kolbaba in Anaheim in the 15-15 bucking battle went up against the nutso. Yeah, and the guy is capable at winning at this level. Kolbaba has proven that. You see the big ride against the nutso, a wild dismount and getaway right here. Got pretty scary, but he's a young guy that could handle it great graphic we just showed you in terms of after that ride in this format Derek Kolbaba has buffed off 19 in a row and those are numbers that should not be beside Derek Kolbaba's name he's a better bull rider than that but here's the thing in the 15-15 not only is it the top 15 guys but it is the best 15 bulls that can be put together for this part of the country no one more, one more regular season events last season than Derek Kobaba. He took home five. 
He was number one in the world going into the finals in Las Vegas, but then he just could not keep that momentum going. Against Smooth Operator, it's going to be hard to find any rhythm at all. Yeah, well, going back to Shorty's point on this bull, they have moved deliveries to him. He's on the right-hand delivery now, and he has been a lot better for a guy to ride. You can still put up huge numbers, but look for the bull to get into a spin to the right. Now, that's going to be away from Derek's hand. He rides left hand down. Should not matter to Cole Baba, though. I expect him to get the job done right here. Three qualified rides against this bull. Two came from Guilherme Marchi. One came from Mason Lowe. Other than that, this bull is a perfect 67 and 0. Cole Baba has the ability, though, to ride this caliber. Not today. Smooth operator becomes a rough out for Derek Kolbaba. Power. That describes smooth operator. Sheer raw power right here. Kolbaba is in good shape as far as left to right go, but he misses the front end, and the bull just completely snaps a rope out of his hand. The 15-15 bucking battles are all about the best versus the best. And if you are a rider waiting on the back of the chutes, or in this case, Jose Vitor Lemmy, get used to what you just saw from Smooth Operator. Lemmy faces a bull by the name of Speed Demon. Yeah, and this one is going to be the opposite, where Smooth Operator was all power. This one's name fits him. A lot of speed. This bull's little, but he's got a big attitude. Lemmy comes down hard. Speed Demon just kept ramping it up, Mac, and that is the book on that bull. He's going to get faster as you get closer to eight. Yeah, and that really is what separates these 15 bulls from the rest of the pack. They don't get weaker as the ride goes. They get tougher. And Lemmy, he is going at it with everything he's got. Look at the big moves with his free arm, but he's not got nothing left to give with his right arm. It's straightened out, and the bull takes it away from him. And, Mac, it doesn't take us long to give credit to the three bullfighters. Shorty Gorm, Frank Newsom, Jesse Byrne, that triangle of protection collapsed to keep that from getting worse for the Brazilian. There's those guys are so amazing each and every time. It, it's so cool to watch that triangle that you pointed out converge on the danger zone. Well, we get a chance as Cody Campbell preps aboard Indian Medicine. It's Cody Campbell's first ever 15-15 bucking battle. Let's talk about some of the basics in terms of scoring. We all know you got to go eight seconds, 50 points from the bull, 50 points from the rider. But this is a subjective sport when it comes to the judges. Yeah, and it's really important, in my opinion, for a rider to finish the ride in good shape. That's the last thing the judge sees. That's the last thing on their mind, they mark off of that. Well, if Campbell gives it some time, you explained it to me great before the show even began in terms of starting and finishing the ride well. Yeah, you know, you can afford to mess up a little bit in the middle as long as you dazzle at the end. <laughs> Leave that impression. is an impression that no bull rider wants to have on his face. Cody Campbell took a shot, and then did you hear it, Mac? He thanked the bullfighters after he popped up. Yeah, he actually apologized to him because he put everybody in a bad situation. And this sport is such timing, and when you get out of time, you take all the power from the bull. And these guys, I can't say enough how tough they are. Let's listen. Well, and unfortunately, the mics weren't close enough to hear the horn to head impact. Cody Campbell, however, looks none the worse for wear. Meanwhile, the Bulls off to a torrid start in Sacramento. 25th PBR Unleash the Beast on CBS Sports is sponsored by Las Vegas. Explore now and visit lasvegas.com. B&W Trailer Hitches, the official hitch of the PBR. And by Monster Energy, Unleash the Beast. People are going to remember where they are at this moment. 
Bushwhacker wins. Yeah, in his farewell season, Bushwhacker's your world champion bull. He won at fair and square. Well, he did it. He is our Derek Jeter, Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali, and John Elway all rolled into one. If there is a Mount Rushmore of Bulls, Bushwhackers there. So's this one, Dillinger. Great Bull Dillinger, the 2001 champion. Then the great little Yellow Jacket, three times the world champion. Won it in consecutive seasons. Another multiple winner, Bones. Bones, and this is a Bull that probably had more in the tank, and uh, Tom Teague decided to retire him. He had done enough. The only one to break up Bushwhackers' streak was Asteroid. As it just a list of great bulls <laughs> followed up by Bruiser. And what can, is he yet to do in his career? Yeah, Bruiser could be the second bull to go back to back to back. He's got a lot more outs tonight. He has young Ty Chandler on his back as he preps. Let's check in with Kate. Well, Craig, I was talking to Ty earlier, and he told me, unlike a lot of guys in the locker room, he doesn't like to know too much about his bulls. He doesn't watch videos, and he usually doesn't even look at the draw until he gets to the event. Well, that all went out the window when he drew Bruiser. He said he's getting so many calls and text messages, it was impossible not to find out. And his first reaction when he found out the draw, he told me it's an opportunity he was dreaming he'd someday have. Well, and Mac, you, you know, I mean, off of what Kate says and off of your experience, I mean, you talk a lot about having to be patient on the back of the bull. How do you balance that patience with the excitement that he has to be feeling to face the two-time world champion bucking bull? Well, first of, first off, he's got to expect to ride this bull. It can't be just enough to come to your first event and have the great bruiser drawn. You've got to expect to ride him right here. It's all got to start there. Bruiser gets the job done. Now it's in the judges' hands. Keep in mind that this world champion bucking bull race first is based on the best eight outs each bull has during the regular season. This goes back to what I was talking about a little bit here. I feel like it's easy to get wowed by the big name bulls. You see, tips him into his hand a little bit, and then his head's picked up. If you can't see him, you cannot ride him. You've got to have your head down and be focused on the bull. Well, I tell you what, looking at the judges' score, 45 points, they were not necessarily wowed with Bruiser's effort. Yeah, and that's a really good school score for most any other bull. But for Bruiser, you expect more. And to win a third world championship, I think it's going to take more. You know what we expect a lot out of is this man, Kaiki Pacheco. Not the start to the season we expected him to have in 2018. Chicago, he was 0 for 2. He was 0 for 2 in Oklahoma City. What he did do, however, was win win the first 15-15 bucking battle of the year back in New York City. And we talk about it, the 15-15 bucking battles matter a lot. There's a huge amount of points available for these guys, so if you mess up the event, you can make up for it in the bucking battle. This is an interesting pairing. This is the sixth time these two have matched up, but the past three times, Jack Shot has won. Jack Shot will continue to get tougher as the ride goes on. Kaiki's got to be as good at seven seconds as he was at two seconds. He's evened it up. Kaiki Pacheco lands hard, but he is feeling no pain. Jack Shot gets dominated by the Brazilian. Big stuff from Pacheco right here. You watch his head. The difference between him and young Ty Chandler. This bull never gets his head out of position. He never loses sight of the bull. He pays for it with a hard landing at the end, but it's too little too late from Jack Shot. There was no bounce upon impact, but the divot came after. 88 and a half points. The only qualified ride so far, Pacheco, the standard. Coming up on the PBR 1515 Bucking Battle, Canadian Dakota Butter matches up against the bull Pearl Harbor. And a cowboy that's gaining strength in the standings, Stetson Lawrence, goes to battle against Mo Leek. But first, last year's PBR world champ, Jess Lockwood, tries his luck aboard Talking Smack as the PBR rides on from Sacramento on CBS.
Get the CBS Sports app for inside access to your favorite teams. Watch highlights, get breaking news, scores, and more. Download the CBS Sports app today. Jess Lockwood has packed a lot into his 20 years on planet Earth. His 2017 World Championship put him on top of the world. Jess Lockwood is your 2017 PBR World Champion, becoming the youngest man ever. No one in the world title, that's what you dream of ever since you're a little kid, and this is what you decide you want to do. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like, yeah, nothing's hit yet, and I don't know if it ever will, but it's a dream come true. Ladies and It's different for sure. A lot of responsibilities come with it, but like I've been saying, nothing's changed at all. Are you the champ? Yeah. Wow. wow. Now I'm like psyched up. Have a great day, buddy. Oh, Bet. Really? Yeah. Good, and you? How old you? I'm 20. You know the rules for it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, since I won the title, I guess I'm noticed a little more, but no, it's no. I don't think anything's changed. How are you? I'm good. And yourself? That's Jack. That's Alexandra. I got to go to the Knicks game uh, from the PBR. That they hooked me up, and then got to go to the Knicks game, and I was there. Got to meet Ben Stiller. That was pretty cool. A lot shorter than you think. He's just a little guy. Oh man, Jeff Lockwood, reigning PBR world champion, to be at Madison Square Garden. Hi. Right, thanks for having me. Are you married? No, I'm not. <laughs> I don't even have a girlfriend. Do you, do you ever plan on getting married? I mean, I realize I'm asking questions that are none of my business, but... Yeah, I plan on it. Someone can put up with me. I just told me not to get a girlfriend and get married too soon, but I'm just going with the flow. Whatever happens, happens. So congratulations, 20 years old, and you're the world champion? Yes, sir. Man, and you were the rookie of the year last year. Yep, yep, it's, it's been pretty good to me. Yeah, I took a nap at Fox. I mean, that's too early for me. I'm a 20-year-old kid. I should be sleeping in till noon. I got one building in my hometown, uh, Volberg. It's a post office, and uh, to come to New York City, I don't even know how they build these buildings. They're so close together. They're not more than 50 feet apart, a lot of them. And it's just a crowded cluster. It's just insane to me. Uh, we have 400 head of cattle and uh, 10,000 acres, and we just we feed them and we breed them and calve them out. You know, it's the world's most famous arena of Madison Square Garden. Be the best. And there it is, that critical first ride of the year for our defending PBR world champ. Mac, it may have been an alien world for Jess Lockwood outside Madison Square Garden, but when he got on the shoots, the shoots are the same everywhere. Yeah, that's the thing about it, and that's what's been so impressive so far to me with Jess after coming off of winning his first world championship. He's let a few bulls get away from him, but it's not been because of anything outside of bull riding. It's just been a little mistake here or there, uh, which is to be expected from anybody in their second and a half year on tour. And Shorty, what's fun, isn't it, is that not only we're getting to see Jess focused over these past couple seasons, but now really with this young crop of talent from around the world, now we get to see him sort of have to keep that focus because other people are going to push him. Well, absolutely. You know, and Craig, talk about ice and the kicker. That piece that you guys just saw on TV, we just watched in here in house, and he had to sit there and watch that same piece. And then he's up next. He's got to stay focused. He does a great job. What impresses me most about this kid is his maturity level for a 20-year-old kid this age. But he's got a couple coaches that hold him accountable to each and every mistake. And he wants to get better each and every time. He knows he's a world champion, but he's not as good as he can be. Well, and Shorty hinting at it, of course, Mac, you are one of those coaches. And he came by and talked to you before this out. Yeah, and I think this is a good matchup for him right here. The bull talking smack. Should be to the left. Uh, doesn't matter for Jess. Either direction is fine. It looked like he was going to be able to correct an early mistake. Talking smack got Lockwood out of position, but then he just paid too much power on the end of his arm, and the ride's over. 
Yeah, really a strong day from Talking Smack. I was I was pretty impressed. I was a little more impressed than even the judges were with that out. I thought the bull had a great day, and you called it. Too much power. He gets him lean back. Anytime a rider's upper body gets lean back, that means they're going to take everything from the bull. As a bull rider, you take their power away by getting up over the front end. When you miss it, you take all the power. And you can see Jess gets it all, then it picks his head up. And here we go again. You get your head up. It's going to end soon. Oh, boy. And that, we see that a lot. That shades of J.B. Mooney right there. That's that frustration with yourself where you are unhappy with an opportunity lost. Meanwhile, speaking of opportunities, we've talked about Bruiser. But guess what? Pearl Harbor is here, too. And Dakota Butter could take this the distance. He could. Butter has the ability to do that. But here's the thing. Butter cannot get just leaning out over this bull. There's a difference between getting out over the front end and just leaning forward. If he leans forward, both of his feet are going to come up behind him, and he's going to go over Pearl Harbor's shoulder and big scores from the bull. Well, interesting. Pearl Harbor seemed to either catch his horn in the gate as it swung open, but keep in mind, Bruiser had a 45. These two dueled throughout 2017, and Pearl Harbor scores a little bit better, 45 and a quarter. Yeah, and just hung his horn right there in the corner of the chute just long enough to turn him to the right. Butter is set down, and Pearl Harbor has a good day for the kind of start that he got. So the two best beasts from 2017 have been unleashed early on in the California capital. Pearl Harbor gets bragging rights on this day. Stetson Lawrence prepping aboard Molik in the red shirt. He's got Brennan Eldred there helping him stay safe. Arm on the vest and Mac. We see that a lot from their best friends. They're the guys that they trust on those shoots. Yeah, and if you see the bull kick up in the shoot, that guy holding the front of him there, that's just keeping him from getting slammed in the front of the shoot. Molik with such a great career, only ridden one time. It was Lachlan Richardson Bismarck last summer at a lower level event, even though the score was not lower level, 90 and a half points. Otherwise, this bull has been perfect in his career. Really a good bull right here, has a lot of timing. Guys will get along with him if they stay in time. And as you said timing, Matt, <laughs> you could see Stetson Lawrence was just a tick off because of the way Malik moves. Yeah, and here's the thing. You'll see Stetson get down right here. He sees his front end one time. Now as it comes, he's going to miss it right there. Now he catch, takes all of the kick. You've seen it snap his head up. When you take all of the fact, we're talking about 1,800-pound animals here. There's no way to, to outstrength them. Lawrence bucks off. However, we found the secret. Takaiki Pacheco season. We just need to have 15 15 bucking battles every weekend. 25th PBR Unleash the Beast on CBS Sports is sponsored by Yeti Coolers. Built for the wild. The 2018 Ford F 150. It doesn't just raise the bar, it is the bar. And by U.S. Border Patrol. visiting Maryland, where the Terrapins are 12 and one on their home court. That's up next, right here on CBS. Doesn't matter where we are on tour, the Ford F-150 is the official truck of the PBR. We only have one qualified ride so far in Sac Town. Kaiki Pacheco is the standard. 88 and a half points. He was the winner of the first and only other 15-15 bucking battle we've had this season, and that was in New York City a few weeks ago. Mac, you talk about the history of the 15-15 bucking battles. It was six years ago today that this format started, and the man we're watching prep, Joao Ricardo Vieira, tied for the most success in this format. Well, and I think this format's been a game changer to see who wins a world championship. You know, these things matter so much. Because to start with, you've only got to beat 14 other guys. You're getting on a bull that's going to give you that chance. 
there's not going to be very many qualified rides in one of these. The bulls are too tough. So if you can knock your bull down in a 15-15 bucking battle, the odds of you getting a lot of valuable points are really good. I am so glad you used the word odds. If you're Cooper Davis and you're on this bull, Catfish John, the odds are 100% you're going to ride him. But if you are anybody else, those odds drop drastically. Especially for Joe Al. He struggles on bulls that go to the right. Catfish John, 99 out of 100 times, is going to go to the right. Not only hey, hey. did that end quickly, but Catfish John just threw Joao into some steel. Joao struggles so bad on bulls that go to the right. He sees behind everything, catches the bull's hip, all the whip, and those steel bucking shoots, as you said, they have no give. <laughs> 1.82 seconds, and then pow. Catfish John wins that one and ups his record to one and two on the year. This is Eduardo Aparecido against Mud Shark. This is a rematch. The last time they met, it went well for Fast Eddie. Oh, but Mud Shark ends this one ever so quickly. Another buck off under two seconds. This is just getting beat off the ball right here. I mean, he has got no shot once this bull leaves the chute. Watch what it does to his upper body and to his head. As the bull goes forward, he is going straight back. Line of sights right there, man. He's got to be up here. I love the way you put that. Mud Shark definitely knew the snap count. Yeah, he and, was out early. And if, if a bull beats you out, it's over before it ever gets started. Well, the Brazilians are going to try to turn it around as a group and as a country because this is the feel-good story of the season so far. Valderon de Oliveira, a year out of retirement. We've talked about the historical relevance of the 15-15 bucking battle, the first ever one here in Sacramento. Let's talk more Valderon. Really is amazing. 94 points against Bucky. All those years ago, he spent a year in retirement, and he's back. He's in the 15-15 bucking battle again, and the guy's riding lights out. And he looks exactly the same six years later. He's ridden 11 of his last 12. Excuse me, that's to start the season. He's 11 for 12, and now he's on Gambini. Uh, if anything, he's better now than he was before he retired, which is unheard of. On the clock. Gambini's not going to make it easy. That's what you expect from every bull at this caliber. You're sure you say he's on the clock. So if he doesn't nod in 20 seconds, he's disqualified. And Gambini has been standing perfect. I think this was a great call by the judges to put him on the clock. Now down to 10 seconds. Critical moments. And that's only the second buck off of the season. He's faced a baker's dozen of bulls, only been bucked off twice in 2018. And this one was surprising to me after seeing what he's accomplished so far this year. Gambini does him a favor when he turns out backwards, I thought, and went into his hand. You can see he's behind. He knows it's over, quits on his ride, and gets away safely. Yeah, and you always say it, Mac. You're never going to outpower these bulls, even as powerful as Valderon is. More buck-offs. Buck-offs galore, except for this man, Kaiki Pacheco. Getting a little lonely. Nah, not really. He'll take that 18 and a half all the way to the bank. Time now for our Matador Bullfighting 101 of the day. I drew a bull they say can't be rolled. This week on Bullfighting 101, presented by Matador Jerky, we're talking leading the bull. Throughout the ride, we always want to take that bull away from the rider. I call it buying real estate. We're going to try to gain as much distance between the rider and the bull as we can. When the bull rider comes off, we want to be able to time it to where we've got our hands on that bull and drawing him to us away from the bull rider. As this ride comes to an end and the eight second whistle blows, you see Cooper looking for a spot to get off. The guys have got their hands on the bull, you know, trying to get his attention focused on them. Cooper kind of has a rough dismount here where it throws him right out in front of the bull. Cody does a great job of getting a hold of him, 
drawing that bull away from the, the rider and, uh, you know, creating that space. Here it is from another angle. Cooper's riding right-handed. We really need this bull to go the other way so he can dismount into his hand. We can't get that done. Cooper's hand's gonna stick in that rope just a little bit. That's what's gonna throw him off over the bull's head. We're all trying to read and figure out where he's gonna hit the ground. Cody Webster's in great position when he does. Yeah, right here, Cody gets his hands on the bull and he leads him away. He's, he's slow, leaving out of there. He's leading the bull away, going slow enough to make sure he's got the bull with him. Here's another look at it, and as you can see, everybody's really trying to get that bull's attention so it's not on Cooper. When Cooper comes off in front, Cody's got full control, leading the bull away, and uh, you know got the skills to get away from the bull too, so everybody's safe. Here's another ride. You're looking at a bull called Airtime. This is kind of a wild bull. He really likes to move around. He's hard to get his attention and keep his attention focused on him. Uh, rider comes down, hits head. We move in in that triangle, try to get the bull to follow us. You see, I led the bull a little bit there, and then Frank grabbed him and followed it up. That's what we want. Make sure to get out to your nearest Sonic location for the Sonic Shake-Up. Get a free small classic shake when you order a cheeseburger or foot-long coney. The scoreboard's a bit one-sided here in the Golden One Center. The Bulls simply having their way with the best in the business. The Cowboys only have one eight-second ride to show. That's Kaiki Pacheco, but getting down now to the top qualifiers in today's 15-15 bucking battle format. Claudio Montagna coming in the, into this weekend, fifth in those very early world standings, but he has impressed pretty much every step of the way, Mac. Spotted Demon, another test. A uh, big test right here, and Shorty Gorham, this is a bull. He's gonna have a lot of head movement, slinging his head around while he's spinning to the right, and he's pretty mean. I think he can play some games with these guys mentally. Well, absolutely, you know, and I think the, the, the thing is is you gotta put that out of your mind and just ride that full shoulder. He's gonna be doing a lot of that. Don't watch any of that. Just let that bull do what he does underneath him because, in my opinion, Justin, the bull looks like he's doing a whole lot, but I think he's wasting a whole lot of movement. If you just ride that middle, you'll be all right. And that's, that's such an important thing, Craig, especially on a bull like we're talking about. It's going to have a lot of movement with his head. That's why you don't keep your line of sight on a bull's head. Just because he slings it to the left, he can still be going to the right. You want your line of sight right where his shoulder blades are, right, right in front of your hand. If you can keep it there, you're going to follow him wherever he goes. Well, and, and you guys talked about the external distractions when we were prepping Jess Lockwood's ride. You're now talking about those actual distractions of what a bull can sometimes throw at you. And like Justin, they, this bull is mean sometimes. Spotted Demon throws Montagna Jr. clear, however, so we didn't get full view of that meanness Shorty was hinting at. But another quick buck off. And this is a really big strong bull another one you can see as he gets slid off of his rope when you get slid off of your rope like that and the kick comes you take all of it and it's going to send you toward their shoulder we only have three rides left in today's 15 15 bucking battle ryan dirty prepping aboard frequent flyer he visited with kate at the top of the show gave us every indication that he was ready Let's go back to last week and what he was able to do in the championship round. Well, Dirt Eater's got all the tools, man. We, we've seen this guy make amazing rides, not just this one against Bruiser last weekend. We've seen him do it at the World Finals. He's won the average at the World Finals before. This guy can really ride. The only question mark is his consistency. You'll see him make a huge ride like he did last weekend, and then you'll see him buck off of several bulls in a row. He's got to get that under control and be able to stop that when he starts bucking off. He's, he's got to be able to correct the problem, fix it right then, and get back on a roll. Frequent flyer doesn't give a lot of riders time to do much of any of that. Yeah, look for a really 
This bull really likes to get in the air and will have some forward movement. Oh. Another buck off under three seconds. And with that little bit of a roll, frequent flyer deactivates Ryan Dirt out of Dirt Eater's TSA pre-status. <laughs> yeah, the bull gets kind of a kind of an off start for him, but when he does get gathered up, you watch him hit off all fours and go straight up in the air. See how he's kicked out this way? That's gonna send all of his momentum rolling. This. Ryan rides with this hand. When you get stuck into your hand to that side, when the bull hits, you're headed to the ground. Well, and like, come on, let's give He's going this, this bovine way. athlete credit, right? I mean, that's a bull that weighs about 1,700 pounds and is able to make his body do that. That is pure athleticism, and that's what every one of these stock contractors are trying to find each and every day, a bull with that kind of ability. Dirt Eater, the latest to taste the dirt. Kaiki Pacheco, still the only man who has done his job here in Sacktown. Coming up on CBS, 2016 PBR World Champion Cooper Davis is off to another strong start. He climbs aboard the bull, Wicked Stick. Then, the world's number one ranked cowboy, Denner Barbosa matches up against Heartbreak Kid as the PBR rides on from Sacramento on CBS. Twenty-fifth PBR Unleash the Beast on CBS Sports is sponsored by Kubota. Visit KubotaUSA.com today. B&W Trailer Hitches, the official hitch of the PBR. And by Wrangler, long live Cowboys. If you are a fan of qualified rides, you have not had much to cheer about. Only one so far with two riders still to go. Kaiki Bashako, 88 and a half, but it was a great one against Jack Shot. The sixth time they had met, and Pacheco was able to even the score. Our next rider prepping, none other than 2016 PBR World Champ Cooper Davis. He has won three different 15-15 bucking battles. Yeah, Davis has been strong in this format, and that's because he can ride the top end bulls. He understands not to miss the front end, and if you do miss it once and somehow survive it, you better find it. He does it better than anyone. And if we want to keep that theme of focus going, Cooper Davis has focus in spades. This was his last win, Austin last season, 91 and three quarters versus Big Cat. Actually, his high marked ride of 2017. He is prepping aboard Wicked Stick. Let's check in with Kate. When we talk about Cooper, guys, we often talk about how he's able to get every point out of each bull and each ride. How he does that, he said he uses a little bit of flash. So I asked him, what does flash mean to you? And he said, well, I work my free arm a little bit more, work my outside leg, but really, it's not an afterthought to him, guys. That's just the style of riding that Cooper has, because he said when he's riding loose, when he's having fun, is when he's doing his best. So expect to see him working that arm in this right here. Well, and that's reminiscent, Mac, of a certain two-time PBR world champion, J.B. Mooney, who doesn't seem to overthink the flash element, but just does it naturally. Yeah, and Shorty, I, I think going back to Kate's point that she made after talking to Cooper, that that's not so much something they plan on, that's just their riding style. And that's something to keep them getting back to the middle each and every jump. Well, absolutely. And two, you got to take into the factor that the bull gets half the point at this level. These bulls are going to get you a lot of points also. But this, Justin, you said it many times. This is the caliber of bull of bulls that you make your living on. You've got to be able to ride these bulls. This is something these guys can do. Cooper Davis is a guy that doesn't let the buck offs get him down. And you've got to understand that you're not going to bat a thousand at this level. He's come off two bulls already this weekend. I I think that what that does for Cooper Davis is that works as a motivation. He goes out there and he really digs deep and brings down the Cooper Davis that fights and wins. And uh, I expect him to ride this bull. 
Wicked Stick, the 2016 ABBI champion. And our longtime fans know that the American Bucking Bull Institute, well, that's certainly, that's the breeding ground, right, Mac? That's the organization that the young bulls come through. And to win a title like that means that Wicked Stick has been good for a while. Yeah, and that's it. That's where they bring them along. That's where they develop these bulls. And you can see Wicked Stick, he likes to lean on the back of the shoot sword. He talks about it a lot. He's getting in his starting blocks. He wants to push off. And Cooper's trying to get him out of that position so that he doesn't get left behind. You got to start good with him. No, oh, wants him in there. Hey! The touch happens. And then once again, the bullfighters come to the rescue. You heard Shorty say he wants him in there, and he did indeed get sucked down to the inside, often referred to as the well. Yeah. Wicked Stick a lot of times a look left, go right. Today he stays to the left, and he's got some movement. You see Cooper start to drop in there. The free arm comes across the neck, and it actually drives his hips further to the inside of the spin. For the past few seasons, we have talked, and rightly so, about Kaiki Pacheco in the great start to his career. Pacheco only 23 years of age, but guess what? Another 23-year-old is storming the castle. Denner Barbosa, another young Brazilian who's done quite well. See, this is the kind of guy that can be in a race for a world champion. The guys at the top might be glad the season wasn't longer. Denner Barbosa makes it look oh so easy. A walk in the park aboard Happy Camper. I think this guy is really going to do some damage. Uh, gentlemen, it's time to raise the roof of T-Mobile Arena. He just rode up straight. Strong rank bull that threw everything but the kitchen sink at him. Dinner Barbosa, man, all the guts in the world. <laughs> and it's becoming very predictable. The sun rises in the east, it sets in the west, and Dinner Barbosa is going to make eight. The guy is riding lights out right now. Dinner Barbosa is now the world number one. And Mac, you're going to give us the opinion, and your opinion matters more than mine, but this might very well be the toughest test so far for Denner this season. Yeah, but that number right there is huge, man. If he can maintain that, he'll run away with this thing. But this bull, you talk about it. He is old school tough. He's up and down. You never know what direction he's going to go. Flapping. Yeah. Once again, Shorty with the on the field call. The touch happens, and it doesn't happen often, but Denner Barbosa has been bested, which means Kaiki Pacheco is undefeated in the 15-15 bucking battle format this year. You know, and he struggled a little bit in the regular go rounds of competition, but as you said, he has been awesome in the bucking battles. Pacheco, the only man to earn points, and it's a lot going to help in his quest to win his first ever world championship. We've talked about the frustrations where he was the bridesmaids two seasons in a row. He wasn't healthy at the end of last year. He looks good now. He's with Kate. Kaiki's had Jack shot six times. You've ridden him three. Kaiki, you and this bull get along pretty well, don't you? I'm very like his bull. One of the best bulls for HD. It's really hard. Bucks good. I'm like right him. HD might have to sell him to you. Congratulations. Thank you. Our Kubota tractor's ride of the day. Well, that's simple. It's the only ride, Mac. Yeah, he's matched up against this bull several times. The bulls beat him a few of those times, but not today. Keeps his head down, finishes the job. Pacheco seizing opportunity where he can find it. He earns 150 points. That moves him into the top 10 overall to number seven. Denner Barbosa, Cooper Davis, Ryan Dirtyter, an injured Gage Gay in fourth, and Claudio Montagna Jr. round out the top five. Coming up next here on CBS, college basketball with Michigan State visiting Maryland. Be sure to join us tonight on CBS Sports Network for more bull riding from California's capital city. Then next Sunday, we're back here on CBS 
with the championship round from Anaheim. For Justin McBride, Kate Harrison, Shorty Gorham, and our entire crew, I'm Craig Hummer. Thanks for watching.